This is going to be a great sister to sister. You know, it's it's a lovely show today, and we're <laughs> it is lovely show. We're talking about can you make yourself happy, your own happiness. Also, is it outdated and unnecessary for a young man to ask the father for his daughter's hand in marriage? If he doesn't, <gasps> that would not be happiness. Yeah. Stay tuned. Find out what the sisters think. that you tuned in because without you, we wouldn't be us. We are five opinionated women of God and we bring your questions to the table, respond from our hearts. And we're so happy today. We have Tiffany Gilbert sitting in for Flo today. Ooh, well, Corey does her little clap. Yes, Woohoo! Thanks, wow. Hey, you know what? Just try to, <laughs> try to get in is what I'm saying. It's tough, it's tough. Um, the She's questions, <laughs> you write to us and, and we take them and we respond. Here's what you said. This is good. Is a father asking, okay, is asking the father for his daughter's hand in marriage old fashioned and unnecessary? Hmm, Roxanne. All right, wait, listen, can you hear that? The 80s is calling for my hair. And here we go. There we are, Alan and I, 1980s. He not only asked my father for my hand in marriage, he asked my dad if we could go out. Wow. Okay. So hey, listen Alan. to the, yeah, she's all Big for Alan. Alan. All right. Big so Alan. this guy that I just met at the some singles thing, you know, at the church, at the church is a good place to meet guys. He's hopping over these chairs at that, our Sisters of Mercy, that building where our church would meet. I'm like, what's that guy doing hopping over chairs? <laughs> Talking to my dad and my mom. Then he comes over to me and says, will you go out with me? I said, what was going on over there? I said, I asked your dad. I said, how did you know I was going to say yes, you asked my dad. <laughs> no, but the rest is all history. And the second picture is us more recently at my Aww. son's wedding. So I have to say this, Exodus uh, 20 says, honor your mother and your father, mother and father, father and mother, so you may live long in the land God has given to you. And Proverbs says, seek wise counsel. So what I have to say is, well, it's up to the person. I don't care how old you are, how young you are. When you honor a family, when you get married, you marry a family. Mm -hmm. That's right. Honor them from the get-go. So, and it's protection. It's protection to the, for the man, it's protection for the woman, it's protection for the couple that you get wise advice from both sides. Now, if you don't want wise advice, and you don't want some wrong advice, <laughs> you gotta sift through it. So tell somebody, say, is it unnecessary and old fashioned? Well, Roxy and I don't always agree, but I agree with Roxy oh. on this one. Listen, it's, it might be old fashioned, but some old fashioned traditions are worth holding they on are, that's to. Good. I like that. yeah, okay, that's I've good. even seen it on modern reality shows, and yes, I watch some reality shows. Mm -hmm. That where they still do this. I mean, even in the worldly views without a godly tradition, they still do this That's sometimes. Right. And is it biblical? Is it a sin if you don't? No, I don't think it's a, it's a mm -hmm. biblical tradition, but I think it's a wonderful tradition. Absolutely. And I'm already drilling it into my kids and oh, my yeah. girls. I'm like, your guy is gonna get dad's permission, okay? Because I think it's awesome. And I, you know what? Think about it from this perspective. Wouldn't you want the, your kids to get, the, the guy that you're asking to get their, your kid's mm. permission? Don't, don't you wanna continue that tradition? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I think that it's, you know, it, it might be old fashioned, but it's worth carrying that on. All right, we got gotcha. you. Yeah, yeah. Anybody? I mean, this, this really has great biblical roots into it. If you look at, I mean, even Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And, true, true. and here's the thing, what you're doing is like, Gloria's a Schaefer. We, this is Schaefer's, this is how <laughs> Schaefer's roll. This is who we are, this is who she is. And a guy's going to come and take her and she will take upon his yeah. last name. 
So there has to be some point of contact of honor, respect, yeah. like passing the baton, yeah. so to speak, and, and not just, you know, disregarding the Schaefer. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's part of that leaving and cleaving. Cleaving, yes, yes. And some men are taking on the woman's name now, so. Why? I know, that's a whole other. So that what? might be something to put, well, in, put in the marriage contract. It's interesting because I was reading why people choose the other point of view, and it's because uh, today women are more independent. A lot of them are out on their own, making yes, their own money in their own home, living their own life. So the guy feels like, well, like, I don't really need to do that. So that's the other point of view why they're not. Well, that's kind of the next question. Yeah. Kind of. So I'm going to ask the next question because it's kind of like that, what Amy just said. Here it is. Should I be expected to pay for a wedding when my daughter has been living with her fiancé for the last five years? Um, no. I don't know. <laughs> what do you think, Corey? <laughs> no. I mean... I think this question is bigger than just that. I think mm. when it comes to expectations of paying for weddings, I think that I think that there shouldn't be expectations at all when it mm. comes to paying yeah. for a wedding, regardless of your living, you know, living situation. I think that when it comes to adult children and finances and weddings, weddings are very expensive. And I think that it needs to have communication regardless of your living situation. I think that you need to have open communication. And I don't think adult children getting married should have any expectation on their parents, well, honestly. I don't know. And I think this is one of those traditions. I think it needs to be a communication, yes. honestly. Yeah. And I know this doesn't answer the question exactly, but I just think. Weddings have gotten out of control. Oh. You cannot expect parents oh, yeah. to finance. Proms have gotten out of control. <laughs> yeah, when proms have gotten out of control, yeah. weddings are beyond. You can't expect parents Whoa. to use their retirements Retirement to pay the wedding. for a wedding. And if you want this extravagant <laughs> wedding, you just can't expect that. Okay, so to get back to the actual question <laughs> at hand, um, for me personally, I'll answer it for me personally. My kids know and know that there are consequences to the choices they make. And, and it is our belief and it is belief that that's not something that, that God wants for their life. And so there's a consequence to that choice that You're they make. You're talking about the living together. Living part. together. Yeah, okay. And so if that's a choice that they make, then that's not something that we would do for them is to, to, you know, to contribute through the wedding. Except... For the cookie table. Right. My mom okay. and I will make the cookie table happen. Right. I want to hear what Tiffany has to say yeah, about this one. You know, I agree. I think it's the word, what comes out to me is the word expectation. Whose yeah. expectation is it? Is it the daughter's expectation? Is it the mother's thinking, okay, she's expecting me, but there's no communication. And I think that's key. I think you have to communicate, especially if they've been living together for five years and then all of a sudden they're thinking about getting married, you know, I, and I don't know, I think, well, at least they're getting out of sin, you yeah. know? So, I mean, yeah. that's one thing. At least they're making a decision to say, you know what? we're going to do it the right way. When you've been living together for a certain period of time, at one point you're almost legally married. I forgot what it's called, maybe. Yeah. Um, uh, what is that called? Anyway, a common, common, marriage. common yeah. law marriage. Law. So have it in Pennsylvania. what I would say is that the parents aren't fully responsible to pay and fully fund a wedding. Right? A couple, they're living on their own, they have their own life, they probably have dogs, you know, whatever. <laughs> but I would be very careful that you ask the Holy Spirit, what, what should I do? Because the, yeah, they want to make it right. Mm -hmm. They want to have yes. a covenant before yeah. God. So Holy Spirit, like, tell me my part that would really bless mm -hmm. these two kids. Because now he's he's a part of the family, right? right? right. So let's go. Yeah. Now, well, would I you pay? Uh, yes, I have paid. Mm -hmm. the I have too. Okay, so the, I said the, no, the, pro I really... the Proverbs 11.25 says this. Until you're in the circumstance, mm -hmm. it's easy that's to true. make a rule. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. true. A generous person will prosper. That's right. Now get this, whoever refreshes others, others. will themselves so. be refreshed. Sometimes you have to send refreshing to your children. Yeah. Yeah. You true. have to say, okay, Lord, I know what your law is. I know what your rules are. But there are times, Acts says too, times of refreshing. 
Jesus brought forgiveness. Jesus brought healing. Jesus brought bonding. So yeah. if God's saying, be the generous heart, mm -hmm. you know, maybe put a boundary on how much it is yeah. and work together. It's a good way to compromise. It's a good way to work together. And the generous heart, God always gives you back yeah. what you More. give to That's him right. Right. under his glory, his honor, and his provision. But paying for the limo, I'm not sure. I just don't know. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> it's crazy. Um, here's another question for you. I, ooh, so good. I can see signs that my fiance is a, this is who I am, take it or leave it kind of guy. He's not willing to talk about changing or growing. Do I stay? <laughs> or do I leave? Should um, I, I have, stay or should, should I, I go? go? <laughs> I have so much invested physically, physically, emotionally, or should I cut my losses and go? Thank you for this question. <laughs> oh, it's like, oh. Amy, what do you First say First of all, this? I don't think anybody should not want to grow and change. I mean, that is life. So I, I don't even know how you work on that kind of relationship. But I do know this, is that you do not get married to change somebody. Yeah, right. you, got, oh, that's good. you gotta, yeah, that's you gotta good. say, this is face value, this is where we're at, and if he never changes, I love him for the rest of my life. Because if you're living to change that other person, you will be miserable, he will be miserable, and it will just never work. Um, when, you know, when you go into marriage, you overlook. I mean, you, you look over. When you get into marriage and you're married, then you overlook right. some things. But I mean, you've got to really look at this because it is a commitment. And then I would ask, are these like major or minor mm -hmm. things? Like what level yeah, of like, yeah. I'm like I'm not changing because I'm into pornography. Mm -hmm. I'm an alcoholic. I, I mean, what are we talking about? Like he's just likes to watch the game on the chair and not help you do the dishes. Like, what are, right. what are you talking about yeah, here? So there, you really wow. need wise counsel. Mm -hmm. right. There's a little song that comes to mind when I hear this question yeah. by good old Kenny Rogers. You got to know when, when to hold them. Uh -uh. <laughs> know <laughs> when to fold them. Okay, girl, <laughs> if you are asking this question now, I know. think you know the answer <laughs> yeah. to so this question. And I do. think you need to fold them and not to hold them. Because I really truly think this person is not just having red flags, they're handing you the they're red flags, you. okay? Yeah, yeah, that's I'm right. just saying, if you're already asking these questions, you know there are things that bother you about this person and you, you don't have to cut your losses yet because you have not already gotten into the covenant relationship, okay? Mm -hmm. So you're at a point where you can get out without being yeah. in a covenant relationship and now is the time to go. I'm well, just and, saying. And I, I think that's key too, is the covenant part of it. So she has to really ask herself, if he never changes, yeah. am I okay with this? Mm -hmm. Am I okay with where he's at? Am I okay with him not changing? And when it says, I can see signs, like you said, right. now if these are big signs, like you shared, yeah. like big things, big the yeah. signs, then right. you need to believe him. Don't try to overlook right. at that point, right. you know, and you have to determine whether you want to invest in something that has a hole in it. If you yeah. continue to invest oh, and he's saying, good. hey, listen, I don't want to change because not changing. And if you're not even willing to look at it, that means you're not willing to grow. And I, I need somebody that's need in there to grow. To grow. Yeah, that's We're right. All growth. We're all growth. <laughs> <laughs> but even if it's not a big thing, a little thing like a snag on a sweater, mm -hmm. when you get into a marriage, is going to continue to unravel, yeah. and it's, it's going to yeah, fall right. apart. And if it's bothering you this much now, mm -hmm. I'm saying it's going to be a bigger Here's hole in the, the sweater. We all have things that bother us about our men. We a do. Bit, it's like. What, what level yes, of intensity is it or of importance is you know, it, you know? Uh, you're right, and, and Jeremiah says this. Now, I think you gotta balance. Is he stubborn or is she controlling? Mm. Oh. You know, is she demanding things that are uh, unreasonable? Yeah. Right. But if he's stubborn, and this scripture came to me, Jeremiah 7, 24, in stubbornness of heart, you go backward, not forward. Do you wanna go backward? Or do you want to go forward? Do you want to stay where you are? Are you being unreasonable and controlling? Are the things small? Are they big? But to me, this is stubbornness. This is um, 
an, an inability to see who you are and want to become one with this person and walk together in unity. He wants to stay where he is. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he doesn't want to talk about it. I mean, someone unwilling yeah. to even talk unwilling. about yeah. things. I'm sorry, that no. is a red flag. I'm glad she realized <laughs> this before, that she doesn't have rose-colored glasses but on. She right. does mm -hmm. say, I have so much invested. Know, and she I, adds physically and, and emotionally. emotionally. Yeah. So. I'm so grateful that you wrote into us, and I'm so grateful that all the sisters gave you wise wisdom because that's what we try to do. It's our opinions, yes, but it is our opinions pretty much from the Word of God. And you get that scripture. What was the Jeremiah? Jeremiah 7 24. Say Stubbornness, that again. you go backward instead of forward. Well, thank you, thank you for writing in that question. <coughs> go forward. You get it. Stay with us, we'll be right back for more Sister to Sister. Boy, I wish you could be here when, you, when they go to commercial and we're still here because the banter from the girls is excellent. Maybe and they could be in the studio audience. You could like come that. to the studio yeah. audience, that's right. But mm -hmm. we have questions that touch the hearts of all of you that are watching us. And this one is really interesting because it's from a guy. So we know that the, you're out there, men, watching sister to sister. He writes, I'm a guy. So I'm coming to the sisters for advice. I desperately want to be married. Maybe we could hook him up with the person that wrote this. <laughs> Just saying. Yeah. The last question. Yeah. <laughs> Listen to this guy. He sounds like a winner to me. I have a good job. I have a home. I'm settled. Wow. I try to go to places to meet women, but nothing sticks. What should I be doing differently? Well, you yeah. know what? You can hear the heart in yeah. just, I mean, well, yeah. the word desperate says it all. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> so, but you know, this is the thing. Like you said, I have a good job. I have a home. I'm settled. I go to new places. I'm meeting these, I'm going to these places to meet women. But my question is, is where is the Lord in all this? Well, he watches oh. us. So. You know? <laughs> well, where is the Lord? <laughs> yeah. You know, where is his relationship? Because you could be saying, you know, <laughs> what if, are we his church? Oh my, oh my gosh! <laughs> but oh you know, he's where? Looking for women like us. <laughs> that's oh, a good I'm start. Saying, listen, God. listen, that's a good start. <laughs> you don't want us. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. Tip. So, but yeah, but you know, because you have to. I remember when oh, I was my. dating and. You know, before this is pre Pastor Jay, uh -huh. okay, and I date, and there's a, a certain point that I got to that I said, you know what, Lord, I'm not dating anybody else until you send me the person. Like, I want you to send me. So I got to a point where I was so in love with the Lord, mm -hmm. and I loved my time with Jesus, where I was like, you know what, I. Now I said, Lord, I do. This is my heart. This is my desire, though. <laughs> but, 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 yeah, <laughs> exactly. You know, and I would say this too. Just because it's not happening doesn't mean it's for you. It could just be a matter of timing. Yes. You know, just give it to God and let Him kind of work out that timing. I, I you know, mean, so I noticed in the question that the things he pointed out were all kind of temporal surface things. Worldly. Like I have a job, I have a house. Like, it's like, okay, what are you doing building your character? Mm -hmm. Like, what are the, the things that the Lord looks upon? Mm -hmm. and, and are those the things that you're looking for in women? So many guys that I talk to, and I, I mean, not that I'm talking to a lot of guys, <laughs> but I'm, I, you know, I have a son, I have a young adult yeah. son, right, okay? Right, right, and right. he has friends. Yeah. Yeah. And so many of the things that they, are looking for all the outward appearance. Like, I want a hot girl, you know? I want them to, you know, look good. And like, not that, you know, physical appearance isn't important, that they need to be attracted to each other, but like, they're so focused on that compatibility 
And where are where is the focus on the character and you know matching up in that compatibility? And so it's like I I would throw the question back at you. Where are you going to find these right. women? Yes. What what are the things that you really truly need to be compatible in? Where you know are you focused on the wrong thing? So you know I would I really take a look inwardly, look at your own character, and look at what you're looking for in a woman. But you know what, I wonder if just from, I agree with you as yeah. far as the character piece, because that's important, but I'm wondering from a man's point of view, if men are thinking about, some men are thinking about being the provider. So he's saying, I have all these, I have a good job, I have a home, I'm settled, I, I have great credit, you know what I mean? Like, I, I want to provide. Not that those other things don't yeah. matter, but I'm wondering if that's the mindset that he's thinking. I was on FaceTime with my sister and nieces, and I was reading her some of these questions, and we got to that when she goes, well, he needs to reinvent himself and get out of a rut and get out of the box. And I thought, ah, that is a really good thought. Good. Just if you feel stuck, reinvent, like go play pickleball or like just do something different yeah. maybe and get in new environments. And then I was reading the questions to my sisters, uh, uh, my, my bio sisters, these are my sisters. <laughs> and my one sister who has a son who's not married said, oh, I know the sisters will simply say, well, go to church. You'll find a girl in church. <laughs> Not, well, yeah, we would, <laughs> but here's the scoop. Her son does go to church, but you have to do more than just sit in the pew yeah. and smile because he's a great guy. You need to do something of service, and then that's how you meet the women that also are serving God. Nice. Yeah. Roxy, what do you have? Well, Proverbs 15 says, without con wise counsel, purposes fail. The guy needs to talk to people around him. What is my problem? Evidently, he meets women and it doesn't quote it doesn't stick. stick. Right. You know, is he bragging about himself, or is he? Is are his standards so high that no woman can match That's up? Like Corey said. Yes. So talk to somebody else and find out what's going on. Get some wise counsel from other friends and other women. See what's going on in your life that you cannot quote, have it stick. And like Tiffany says, it's not gonna stick if it's not God's choice. That's right, I like and that. And be like glad that. it doesn't stick. That's you right. might be that with the wrong so person. True. That's yeah. right. Well, I'm gonna go to this last question real quick. And it simply says, can you create your own happiness? And so to our happiness meter, Amy, I love I happiness, go. I love everything <laughs> happy and joyful, but life is not all yes, happy. Right. You know, even now as I'm sitting here answering this question, in about two seconds I could cry mm -hmm. because of a precious loss in my life. But what I do know is Proverbs 24, I love this in the Passion, wise people are builders. They build families, businesses, communities, and through intelligence and insight, their enterprises are established and endure. Because of their skilled leadership, the hearts of people are filled with treasures of wisdom and pleasures of spiritual wealth. So there's an element of creating, my, but I am building my life. I am building businesses. I am building relationships. And in, in that, I am creating, so to speak, my world, my family, my future, my purpose, the church. So I think in an essence, um, you are in the driver's seat of your life. Well, you're creating happiness by circumstances. And surrounding myself with the right people, the right team, uh, dealing with family stuff so there's a healthy environment in the home. Like I'm building with my life. Right. You know, and I think that's good. I think one thing that we all have to kind of just keep an eye out for is when those people or situations, mm -hmm. when they don't go well, right. if, you, right. if your happiness is totally invested in, in that, them. Right. And well, then, well, the truth then, is, yeah. you know, it, it, from a biblical standpoint, we know that joy comes from the Lord. Mm -hmm. And that's where our real happiness right. comes from. Stay there. We'll be right back to wrap this thing up. We talked a lot about today about relationships, you know, about fiancés and what do we do and can we create our own happiness? I love that point that Tiffany brought up at the very end that our happiness is not in circumstances. Our happiness is not in other people. True joy and happiness 
can only come from Christ. So I pray today that you know God, that you will know Christ personally. And I promise it won't be a perfect life. It won't be an all happy life, but you will have a deep joy that will help you go through any turbulent storm that life could throw at you. But we always like to end with a scripture. And today, this is a doozy. It is in Psalm 119. Read it with me. <clears throat> Incline my heart to your testimonies and not to covetousness. Turn away my eyes from looking at worthless things and revive me in your way. I love what another version says. It says, help me to turn my eyes away from illusions. There are illusions out there. Follow this, be led by this. But you say, I've got to have my heart turned toward God. I will be led by him and not by anything else. So I pray today that you just make a firm decision in your heart to be led by the Lord, by the Holy Spirit in every relationship, in every circumstance, in every area of your life. And I promise he will never let you down. That's right. And my sisters never let me down. Each and every week we come to you and we come from the wisdom of the sisters. And we also end with this scripture that simply goes like this. As iron sharpens iron, so does the countenance of a man sharpen a woman. And then I say, you see family, these girls make me a much better Kathy. We will see you next time on Sister to Sister.